you know, wearing, or, you know, and all that. So you'll be, you'll be talking about 50, 60, maybe 70 years you know, for Fuji itself. So um, what I think has happened is that Fuji brother, has remained brother, constant. Please. So the influence has been proper. Um, the only paradox that I see is that, yes, there seems to be a kind of renaissance but that is on the part of audiences. Uh, Fuji has not died. But then the flip side of it is that Fuji is also aging. And you will see from the people in the house, we are celebrating Barista, right? Barista will have been 74 if he was alive, right? Uh, Kevin and Lajiko Linti is here. Practically 90% of those who are still propelling the gospel of Fuji music are now getting old. If you understand what I mean. All right. Sorry, I have to interrupt you. Um, excuse me, let's get to the presence here. The reason why we call each other here was to celebrate an important thing in our life. And it commands so much respect when we have leadership of government, veterans, old fathers amongst us. In a setup like this, greeting is normal, but in a very fashion manner, simplicity and quietness. Don't let us lose the value of reason why we call you. Reason why many of you left the Badon as early as 6 a.m. in the morning, left America to be here in Lagos. Please give us the honor to celebrate this man with a lot of candy. Thank you. All right, thank you, Marigo. So as I was saying, uh, the majority of those who are still flying the flag of Fuji are getting older. My age is 65. Um, majority, if you mention the top 10 Fuji artists or top 20, they are the same people that we have been listening to in the last 20, maybe 25 years. That is good on the one hand, but on the other hand, it, 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 it simply means that uh, maybe Fuji is not doing enough to bring up younger generation of artists. And, and one clear example would be that uh, where is the generation of the Shanko Rashidis, who ordinarily ought to be taken over from those who are still very relevant, even in their late 40s, in their 50s, in their 60s, and of course in their 70s. So it's a paradox. Is Fuji influencing younger generation of artists? I will say yes, we're not seeing it enough, but one that you cannot deny is the fact that Fuji is also influencing and inspiring artists in other genres. We watch a documentary now, somebody said, uh, Zazu is not music. Who says it's not music? It is content for a different level of audience. And in any case, Kevin Kwara is here. Everybody knows that the, if you trace the inspiration of Sazu, it's from his music, isn't it? You know? It's from Kevin Kwara's, you know, Firmu Jejogu, Jejogi, Sazu, in those days. Maybe it might be different in terms of how Portable has done his own. Um, Olamide's brand of music stemmed from street. Street is Fuji. And then a bigger example will be Whiskey. When he first came at 21, uh, with, uh, what was that song again? Sorry? Bakurumo. What will be the inspiration of Gobi no Fashola, blah, blah, Aki Yui, and then, you know, and, and you are pre-singing in a hip-hop song. The inspiration is Fuji. When they have become bigger, winning Grammys, doing this and that, don't let, don't let them forget that part of the inspiration that propelled them to where they are today. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. That was, that was a lot. Um, sir, to Mr. Um, Mayor Akinpele, this is for you, sir. Majority of the new school are on the opinion that Fuji music is for the lower class. Yes. And um, uh, lower class of the society, how best do you think this notion can be corrected? as the genre of music actually appeals to all classic people. Um, let me start by saying that that assertion is wrong. 
Reggae music is not for the lower class of society. Music is universal, so that is not really class. What you have is genre, different genre, but it's not class. So that's not true. Sorry, but the, so, sorry, sir. But the difference is that the difference is that um, that the evolution of Puji, when you look at it, starting from where it to now become what it is. You know, initially when it was wearing, it was basically to serve a religious purpose. Wake up Muslims for them to be able to do one of the things of Islam. Eventually, it was commercialized and it became Fuji because you now see a jewelry artist now going to queen parties and being professional musician instead of something that was supposed to be a religious um, um, was to, that was start to serve the purpose. But when you look at when you look at Fuji now, by the time you look at, if you remember the, the song that came out one time here in Fuji, Barista changed Fuji to what it is today. He, he was able to he was able to bring it to a higher level where it appealed. The, there was a cross appeal to a lot of people, and then people that came after it, at that time came a quarter to you know, because they were they were contemporaries. Both of them were able to when they left the army to be able to make move Fuji to become a commercial music that appeals to a lot of people. Then people who came after them like K1 has been able to now move it higher, introduce different things for me to eat. You now have guitar, you have piano, you have strings and all that. So there's no way you can listen to it and say it's for it's for it's for the lower class. No, it's not. And when you look at that's why it is important that Fuji must look at what the future should be. The future of Fuji will be, um, I will say that you can see the future of Fuji in the song that came out released at the Orioki. And I will, I will share that, I will share an experience with you. Last year, I was in Atlanta, USA. And some of my friends took me to a nightclub in, in, in Atlanta. He, he, he is a white, it's a white club, so the DJ was a white guy. Apparently, um, one of these top comedians, AY, was also in the club that night. Maybe the guy had that, that some Nigerians in the club. So he started playing Nigerian music. He started with um, 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 Father Boy, then he played Dankido, he played with me. Then when we were drinking, I just heard, pa 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 na 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 pa 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 na and, I, I, and he started playing at the Oriyoki. I was excited because this is a traditional African music, you understand, being played in a nightclub by a white DJ because it is, he did not understand what Omar was saying, but the reading, reading, he could, he, could, he could understand the reading because the music was fast, the music was modern, and the music was dancing. So, for Fuji to, for Fuji moving forward, Fuji artists must know that they have to do music that will appeal to the younger people that is the future for them they must do music that will appeal to the younger folks and the music must be fast it must be modern and must be danceable thank you very much sir okay um i think the reason for that question is for most of us why growing up me i have an experience with my dad okay i have this neighbor his name is baba Farouk. i can never forget when he went home in the morning, he was always off with Fuji song. And I can remember very well, I was in the kitchen one day, so the man was playing, um, sorry, I don't know, like that song. So they are like, oh, you shut down, go to the baba like it. So I remember the thing, I know the song, so I don't know, no, I mean the song, I don't know. The next thing was, what? What are you singing? You are singing Fuji music in my house? No, sir. I think mean, that actually disciplined me that day. I would have loved to, like, you know, know more about Fuji music, but I don't know why you just sing, don't sing Fuji music, you can sing other songs. You know? And I'm not the only one with the experience. Like, the box of living here, there's a lady that said, same thing like that. Like, just say, don't sing Fuji music. And but it's actually interesting. I think that the lyrics, the, the sound, the tune, very interesting. That is why I asked that question. So. Can I just give it to you? Just two quick uh, yes, reactions to that. Yes, uh, one is the fact that it's about perception. Um, in Lagos State today, the, the, the language of social music 
is Fuji. Fuji. And if you go to, and you can see that from Lagos State Establishment, A1 Maigo is, is like the, is like the unremovable factor in Lagos State social life. And, and, and who is that? That's the top echelon of the social class. So you can't, you can't, so it's about perception. The other part uh, is to liken it to a uh, fixation with the premiership. A lot of people will tell you that Nigeria today, maybe especially in Lagos State, that those who support Chelsea are a particular. They are the not a particular. <laughs> but then, but then, but then, that is the wrong perception of it. You know, the the most or being the most intellectual, the most upwardly mobile supporters of the Premiership in Nigeria are Chelsea fans. Yes, I'd also like to add as well for the future of Fuji music. Okay, that's your question yeah. actually. The future, the future of music, yes. Because you represent this generation. Yes. Um, so we have created Fuji Opera has created a multi-dimensional platform that recognizes the past, past and also reimagines the future of the genre. And over, um, over two years now, we have been able to speak to certain target audiences, definitely the new millennials and generations as well, having um, conversations with them, creating um, entertainment formats, um, entertainment series, or should I call social events, social events where we can interact with this younger generation. Um, we started off with an exhibition in 2020 um, which showcased the rich, um, rich culture of Fuji um, um, subculture. So it was not just about the music, but also about art as well, fashion. So it was through memorabilia and also archived um, footages and interviews uh, where we honored um, Barry's in 2020. And then we com commenced with um, a live music showcase. In 2021, we've, we created like a pop, um, Vox Pop series as well, going to Fuji communities the core fans and having conversations with them on where um, the, the genre is at the moment and then we've been having amazing receptions from them as well and then I can also say that we've created like a podcast series because we need to know the tools that we need to engage the younger the newer generation of music lovers um, using the likes of um, Instagram Facebook TikTok um, and Clubhouse as well or in Twitter spaces where we can have conversations with this younger generation on how the how this genre can become bigger and keeping the genre alive basically. So we've created podcast series as well in partnership with Foman, who has been very very supportive, um, interacting with um, a lot of um, Fuji artists as well, and it's available on different um, streaming platforms as well. And then in 2021. Um, December, we created a unique music platform called Fuji Vibrations, where we acknowledged um, we acknowledged um, established artists, the likes of um, the likes of um, Alaji Merenge, the likes of Remy Aluko, Atawewe, Kes, One Malaika, but not leaving the emerging new artists who are very very relevant in today. So the likes of Adisa Hemesi. And this, so this platform, platform was designed to just showcase this genre and keep it alive. And so I think that the future of, um, of Fuji music is, it's very imperative that we speak to the younger target audiences as much, and I agree with um, what Mr. Steve Ayeride said as well. I agree that there has to be some sort of fusion and their progression with the sound as well. But we should also showcase in different platforms, not just music, but also in arts, in different facets, which Fuji and Opera does. Okay, sir. The last question. Okay, I'm sorry, but I also want to say something. The younger generation always insists on things being fast, being, being modern, and all that. But will that not lose the very essence of Fuji music itself? No, it may not. You know why it may not? No, it may not. Why it may not is that if you look at Fuji, 
if you look at Fuji, you know, um, because music is dynamic, at a time, at a time, Fuji music was dominating the music industry. You, in fact, um, Juju musicians were forced to start playing Fuji. Even in churches, you will see that they play readings from Fuji. But, but at that time, it was still sexual. I didn't cut across the youth until Paman did consolidation. We changed and appeal to the younger elements. It's like a it's like an hip hop thing, like the kind of thing that I said that is like I infusing hip hop into Fuji at that time. And and it worked. If you look at Juju, there have been a very a lot of successful Juju musicians. When Shino Peters did Afro Juju and it became very successful when it started with Ace, it's because the music was fast, the tempo was fast, it was danceable. And that is what usually appeals to the younger people. So, because music is dynamic, for you to capture them, you have to appeal to them. Because all our superstars now that are winning Grammy, the only thing they are just doing is playing Afrobeat and then fusing it with traditional music. You understand? But people love it. It cuts across. It was able to win Grammy. So you you cannot you cannot you cannot lose without losing the essence of that music. You must broaden the scope of those you appeal to. Okay, thank you very much. Just this last question, yeah, and I will look, Mr. Uh, Mayor, keep able to answer, Mr. Stephen. Just in one minute, uh, how can this generation of Fuji act with evolved styles and sound be encouraged to achieve more without worry of their style being accepted? In the Fuji world? Well, I mean, it's very simple. Um, that actually goes sync with what we've got. Uh, there's no static style to music. Uh, Whiskey's music is not like Bonner Boys or David, but then it's still within the same genre of Afrobeats, even though I have a problem with that too. Yeah. But I don't know what it means. Like that, you know, that, that shouldn't be what you know, we should accept. But that's that's a different argument. So how can um, Fuji endure? Let them continue to play. Because like we said, you know, the other time, the mere fact that it has survived in its original form for almost 50, 60 years means that there is substance in what is there. So let them continue to play. Uh, there is no youth that is a youth forever. Youth do grow to be adults. So they mature with the sound and the music. And therefore, what will be important in addition to playing good music, and good music is relative, it's not about content. You know, the form, the style, and everything just have to appeal to the audiences. So what is important is to continue to, how do I put it, to ensure that Fuji music endures. And part of what that will require is in is in doing the kind of thing, the thing that uh, Fuji uh, Opera guys are doing, create platforms where the elder ones can continue to play, and then you can discover new ones. And then let's do the kind of a thing that TK is doing. Look at the way he has celebrated Ayinamura. Uh, now he's preparing to make a film about barista. As good, uh, yes, absolutely, he's, he's working on that. But as good as that is, let us also put it in our consciousness that our legends, our stars, our icons do not have to die before we celebrate them. So if I help you, can be made for Baba Commander Chief Ebenezer will be, for Kibben Kwara before they leave. Uh, an argument that I've had with my friends who have had the privilege of managing Baibu for a long time is that how come we do not have a definitive biography or documentary, not a biopic now, about him. And I and I think that we had this argument when he was going to be 55. Ten years after, he has lost 65. Are we waiting till he's 70? So don't let us continue to wait. Because the more we document them, the more we celebrate them, the more we will give um, good instructions and inspiration to the younger ones that there is a reason for them to continue to be Fuji artists. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Yeah. On the final note, my own advice to the younger freedom musicians, 
is for them to succeed, they must do, they must, they will read. I was using Nole Sakara. That was the, that was the dominant reading within, within the contest there. But now, you will see that there is Sakara, there is Akpala, there is guitar, there is sax, there is everything. It's because of the modern, modernization of the music. So they have to learn from there to know that they must make their music to appeal across the board. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. That'll be all. So, just one second, if you don't mind. Okay, um, bigger, please, I, I beg your pardon. <laughs> I know that we're running out of time. I just thought that I should respond uh, briefly to the very brilliant idea that Professor Jadi dropped the other time uh, about creating a Fiji museum, something grand. All I would like to say is that, frankly speaking, we do not need to wait for something grand before we. Um, cement the legacy of Sikiru and the barista. And we have something ready-made, which is Fuji Chamber in Isola. You know, TK has been there, uh, uh, my even mentioned something like that. Um, appeal to government, appeal to donor, donor agencies, because if you rely on government alone, government also, you know, looks for money from donor agencies to build these kind of structures. So if you are saying, let us have something grandiose, it may never happen, or it may not happen soon. But then Fuji Chamber is there. We have two options. Is either the trust or the family of Sikura and Debarista, you know, want to say, let us rebuild this thing and share or give it to a developer. Or you make something, um, a legacy out of it. And these days, you know all the uh, donor agencies that are giving millions of dollars for worthy courses like that. A Fuji museum, a resource center, is what I see in Fuji Chamber and Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, please, uh, you know, like I said, I'm also a Fuji artist. I'd like to meet these donors so they can come my house to a resource center. And they can I have a round of applause for not doing people, you know, Mr. Steve Ayarini, my sister Kichi, Obidi, and Muramba. Can I take a picture with the can I have a fire and um, Mr. Goldmine? Please take a picture. With the they can have the prof. Can the prof please join us? Professor, thank you. And president of Fuman Fresh Juice.